Are you looking for a change management strategy template? Well, in this video, I am going to be showing you step by step exactly how to create one along with the columns and data points that you're going to want to capture. Now, if you are short of time, I have made a pre-built, pre-formatted template that has examples that is available for instant download. There will be a link in the description down below if you did want to pick that up. Nevertheless, let me now walk you through step by step exactly how to create one of these important templates for free. So the first thing I'd recommend that you do is give the document a title. That way, if you share this with any stakeholders, they know exactly what they're looking at up front. So what I'd like to do is click the insert at the top on this ribbon here, then click shapes. Then I'd suggest using the rectangle. We're going to hover somewhere in A1, left click and drag to about K3. At which point the shape format is going to appear at the top, it will automatically be selected. And I'm going to select this one here, the colored fill gray accent three. Now you can choose any color that you like the look of or that meets your organization's branding. So we've got this in place. I'm going to right click here and then I'm going to select edit text, at which point I'm literally just going to put change management strategy. And we could put template in as well and then save this to our local drive or upload it to an internet site. That way, whenever you need a change management strategy, you can just leverage this. The next thing I want to do is left click and drag it up just so it appears in the far left corner of A1. And I'm just going to put it onto the grid lines so it's in line. We are going to remove the grid lines later, though, so it's not too much of an issue if you don't do that. And then I'm going to select all of this text, click the home ribbon at the top. I'm going to bold this and increase the font size to about 24. We can also change the font if we did want to do that, but I'm going to keep it as Calibri for now. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is make column A a little bit smaller, and we're going to start creating some important content areas. So the first one I'd recommend is project name. I then suggest documenting who the project manager is on the specific project. We want to capture the version of this document. We want to capture when it was created. And we also want to capture the date that the document was last updated as well. At which point I'm going to select from B5 through to F5. I'm going to bold these. I'm going to put a gray background on as well. And I'm going to, we're going to middle align and increase the indent by one. Now, if I select B all the way through to K, hold shift on my keyboard, that, that shortcut might be a little bit different if you're working on a Mac, I'm on a PC. Then I'm gonna hover in between one of the columns and see this icon, left click on my mouse, and I'm gonna make the width about, let's do 30 for now, we can always change it. But you'll see it's just given us a lot more space to uh, start entering information. We can also see all of this now as well. I'm gonna increase the row height of five to make this like this. And I'm going to left click from B5 through to F6. And I'm going to put all borders on. That way we've got some content areas. So I mentioned earlier about the grid lines. If we click view at the top and then remove the grid lines, you'll see we can start documenting this information. So we put the project name in here, the project manager, etc. So we have this in place. Now, basically what we want to do is create the table and the main data points. Now, this document, by the way, should be created early in the planning phase to ensure alignment. And then you can share it more broadly with everyone affected by the change. So that's why I'm going to recommend the following columns. Now, we've already created some formatting, which we can leverage. OK, so bear that in mind. So what I want to do is going down to B8. And the first column we're going to want to put in is strategic item. I'll walk you through each column, what we're using them for, and then we'll do the formatting at the end. So the strategic item in this column, this is where you can identify the core area or component of the change. So for example, it could be team structure or transparency as an example, and you can use it to quickly pinpoint the element each row addresses. Okay, so strategic item. The next one is going to be the objective. Now in here, we want to define the primary purpose or goal for that strategic item. Now, you do want to keep it concise so that everyone understands the exact outcome being pursued. Next description, 
Now, you want to explain the key actions or tasks needed to meet the strategic items objective. So you only want to include the essential steps to keep your plan straightforward and easy to follow. The next column I recommend including is key deliverables. Here you can list the tangible outputs or documents that will result from each strategic item. So examples may include finalized project plans, communication schedules, or risk registers. Owner, so somewhere for you to assign a person or team responsible for driving the strategic item to completion. This will help to ensure accountability, helping others know whom to contact for progress updates. And then we want somewhere to document some kind of timeline. So you can specify when the work on the strategic item begins and ends. Sticking to these deadlines will help you track progress and maintain momentum. Now you could also put start date and end date as two separate columns if you wanted to. So as an example, start date and end date. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to click on Home, Format Painter, and then I'm gonna select all of these here. And you'll notice what that does is it puts the middle of line and it also gives us that indenting. I'm then gonna select column eight for the row height and we'll put that to about 25. And then what I'm gonna do is select B8 through to H. Let's go to 30 for now. And I'm gonna put all borders on. Then if we click View, our grid lines are already removed, but you can have the grid lines on or off and you can see we have this nice table ready to leverage. So this is our change management strategy template that we can use going forward. Now, before I finish, I do just want to quickly show you this. Now, this is a completed change management strategy template. Now, this is what is going to be available in that instant download in the description down below. So it gives you examples of strategic items, objectives. It's pre it's pre built out with examples. So as I say, hope this video is useful. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. And with that said, best of luck over to you. And I hope you have an excellent day.